Hi everyone, welcome to Get Well with Dr. Shell. I am Dr. Shalene Alalji, better known as Dr. Shell, and I know as a board certified OBGYN and a functional medicine expert, your health is unique and deeply personal. It is a combination of genetics, lifestyle, and environment. Know this, no matter what your starting point is, you are never powerless over your health. Being on a health journey is a marathon, not a sprint. This podcast is about walking you through many different perspectives on health conditions, symptoms, and solutions that can help you get from fatigued to fabulous. My mission has always been to offer my patients and community the best of mental, physical, and spiritual wellness. You can learn more about me and my wellness center and schedule your telehealth appointment at drshell.com. We can support you no matter where you are in the world. This podcast is a powerful and simple way to carry the wisdom of thought leaders from around the world in your pocket and continue to develop your own healing journey every single day. So let the journey begin. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Get Well with Dr. Shell. Today, I have a wonderful, wonderful speaker here with you, um, and you're going to really enjoy what he has to say. So we have Dr. Sam Shea, DCIFMCP. Uh, he, Dr. Shea helps busy, health-conscious entrepreneurs and mompreneurs attain and sustain high performance so that they can create more freedom for themselves and others. He has dedicated his life to helping others through functional medicine and functional genetics. Dr. Shea walked his own health journey from being chronically unwell from ages six to 18, which is really your developing years. And I'm mm -hmm. sure that was a tough time. Uh, and those uh, symptoms included severe fatigue for him, anxiety, digestive problems, chronic pain, severe insomnia, and poor nutrition. He dedicated his life to natural medicine to get himself and others well, which led him to functional medicine and functional genetics and functional testing, which all of us have a story, don't we? And so, um, yes, Dr. Shea has his, and we're going to hear more about it. Dr. Shea is the creator of the 10 pillar method to properly assess and most important and most commonly missed components of health and wellness. Too many well-meaning people chase the latest hack or trick or supplement or gadget, yet they never fully grasp the 30,000 foot view using the lens of the 10 pillars of health. To learn even more, get Dr. Shea's free ebook, which is called Biohack Your Biohacking with the 10 Pillars of Health, a commencement guide to common sense. Oh, common sense. Yes. You're thinking commensal. That's I really know, funny. Uh, You've been crazy. staring at too many gut tests today, Dr. <laughs> Shell. Come, yeah, come there you go. I'm like a that, That's hilarious. Guy. Freudian slip there. All right. That's hilarious. Exactly. Exactly. To functional medicine, to functional genetics. Anyway, his website is drsamshay.com. And that you can just go forward slash biohacker and get yourself a free copy of his ebook. So welcome, Dr. Shea. It's so good to Thank have you. Thank you. For, for those of you not, not totally up on the nerd speak that just happened <laughs> there, what, what commensal bacteria is a section on a stool test to look for the, 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 the normal flora. And so yeah. just the conflation of common sense with commensal <laughs> sense was just totally yeah. hilarious for people who stare at stool tests all day. Exactly, exactly. Well, you know, you and I do, and uh, maybe some people out there do, but maybe. Uh, you and I got that little joke, didn't we? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, I always love to hear about your personal story, you know, because to me, it's all about who we are, how we got here, and why do we do this work that we do, because it's such important work, right? So tell us a little bit about that, because as a kid, I think that's really, really tough to have those times when it's just life is tough. So my, so it's actually apropos of nothing, the commensal bacteria is actually going to lead into what happened when I was younger. So yeah. ironically enough, I'll just tie that in. Yeah. So what happened was at age six, I was, uh, my parents had a nuclear divorce and to which me and my sisters were all caught, caught in the uh, blast radius. 
And that triggered 12 years, age six to 18, of severe disruption in my health caused by just epic stress compounded by, you know, there's the emotional stress and tensions at home uh, and combined with a lot of the humiliation, isolation and violence at school I went to that was not dealt with or protected. There was just hypocrisy all the way around gaslighting and it all kind of fell on me. And so I coped by going, becoming extremely stressed out. And I developed two addictions, one to sugar, one to screens, particularly video games, I developed severe constipation, which is where the commensal comes in. Now people think like, Oh, what's the big deal? Well, if you can't go once every three to five days for 10 years straight, that, that creates a huge amount of backlog and, and recirculation of toxic toxins and everything else in the gut. I also had chronic pain from the injuries I sustained from the violence at school. Plus Wow. Uh, sitting all day in, at desks and in front of screens and video games. Think, I thought pain was normal. I thought spinal pain was a normal thing because I didn't right. know any better. Right. Uh, and also crippling, mind-numbing insomnia where I couldn't get to sleep. I would wake up at 3 a.m. on the dot and then I'd be just blasted awake at 6 a.m. To, to catch a school bus to a place I hated to go to. Wow. And so you talk about 6 to 18 being these developmental and I call formative years. Yes. The there's other problems. I had anxiety. I had depression. I was all, all sorts of stuff was happening. And then um, the sleep was so crippling. It actually stunted my growth. So mm-hmm. it, it really did. So according to my shoe size, uh, my father's height uh, and a couple other kind of factors on the charts, like I should be a good four to even six inches taller than I am, but I'm not. Wow. And because you grow most when you're asleep and my sleep was wow. just devastated. And so, and I was supposed to be the third generation medical doctor of my family. So my grandfather was a very famous medical doctor. He was the founding director of the Fells Cancer Research Center at Temple University in 1937. Wow. And he published over 300 articles and became very famous for developing uh, uh, rodent models for uh, chemo oncogenesis. So he's the one who developed how to reliably create breast tumor models in mice, as wow. well as yeah, uh, duodenal ulcers, I believe as well. Interesting. And uh, my father and mother are both medical doctors. And my father is also uh, famous for his work in PTSD and moral injury. And so, the- so I, I, so that's interesting to me. Oh, it's interesting. It's layered and ironic. Yeah. The irony has not escaped me. Yes. Uh, yeah, because <laughs> that is the irony, right? Because, I mean, I think uh-huh. a lot of what you're talking about, and we talk about this in my community, in our podcast all the time, is the amount of damage, emotional wounds, and, you know, psychological wounds, and the trauma that is just unreleased, and it just kind of gets caught in your cells at a very cellular mm-hmm. level, what that does. And of course, you had several aspects of PTSD from all that you were mentioning, this nuclear divorce that as you call it, which is a very powerful statement in and of itself. So I'm really, um, the whole the whole story is just sort of like a full circle story, it seems. Like. Uh, it gets, it's even more first full circle. I mean, the, yeah. the, the fact is that my father's world famous for coining the term moral injury. He's got a MacArthur award to his name for his work on defining the term moral injury, which is separate from PTSD, but they usually happen in parallel. PTSD is the perpetuation of survival instincts in a non-survival situation. Right. Whereas moral injury is the betrayal of what's right in a high stakes situation by someone in authority. Betrayal of what's right in a high stakes situation by someone in authority. And the irony is that, my father and mother mm-hmm. caused moral injury in me. And so did the school, which had a stated uh, moral ethos of human values, yet were willingly, oh, willfully blind of overt violence that happened right in front of them wow. in the school. And my parents didn't intervene. The school teachers didn't intervene. The, the parents of other kids didn't intervene. The community didn't intervene. So in the name of his career of defining moral injury and the divorce where my father decided to be very hands-off and just fulfill his legal and financial obligations, which were non-trivial right. in terms of the divorce. It was non-trivial, but this still the emotional neglect was real leading to very real moral injury. Now, I will say that despite the many layers thick of irony, it goes even full of circle that I use my father's work in my practice. 
his work is good, even though in the name of the fight, you know, how strange that is. And my grandfather's work, he yeah. was a gastroenterologist. I, and here we are talking about gut, the opening, yeah. opening gate. We're talking about poop stuff. Wow. And so it's, it's, I feel like yeah. m- what I'm doing is taking the lineage, the, the, the lineage uh, that I come from and combining it into the best of a uh, best of both worlds, like functional medicine. I define it as the best of Western medicine, lab diagnostics with yeah. the best of natural medicines, lifestyle, nutrition, interventions. Correct. So we've got the, this estuary, this, this medical estuary of Western and natural yeah. coming together and using updated things but even in the psychological PTSD world, like we've now got things like internal family systems work, the work of Byron and Katie. We now mm-hmm. have this whole realm of psychedelic assisted therapy opening up. We've right. got nutrition, neurotransmitter testing, brain inflammation, right. uh, all uh, thyroid work, you know, to help with brain yeah. and uh, adrenal work. It's, yeah. it's now we've got in this wonderful modern times, this bridge of functional medicine to connect the toys of Western medicine with the wisdom yeah. of natural medicine. Right, right. I think that's a, a very, very powerful story, Dr. Shea. It's, you know, it's one of those things where you came from trauma and experienced your own trauma, your own health issues, But yet, like a lot of us in functional medicine, and I find this over and over and over again in all the colleagues that I meet, there is a reason we all went into functional medicine. We've had our own journey. We've had our own dilemmas that we weren't able to solve using traditional medicine. And, you know, we had our own issues, whether it be, you know, as an adult, as a child or, you know, or both. And I think we've just come to terms with the fact that unless we look at the comprehensive approach and a root cause based approach to your health and healing and, um, you know, and really just repair of the cells, including a mind, body and spiritual repair, you're not going to get where we truly, truly want to be. Right. And that's yeah, at best you can plateau. You know, like you can get meaningful results, but I mean, I created the 10 pillar model precisely because I had all 10 pillars and crumbling. Yeah, I I was working with with very complex patients when I was practicing in New Zealand before I came back to the States and now do a full telemedicine full time. Um, What I found was that really, really complex cases had a minimum seven out of 10 pillars crumbling, which seven varied. Of course. And what I found was that most clinicians, if they're honest, are really good at one to three pillars. Yeah. Good at another three or four and kind of not really involved with the other three to four. And if you have seven plus pillars crumbling and you just go from one protocol to one product to one practitioner, like you can get unpredictable or plateaued results. Like technically, like if you're sitting on seven tacks, Right. And then you remove two of them. You're right. technically healthier, but you yeah. don't feel necessarily a lot better. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's what's really important, right? And that's where the function, you know, the function of comprehensive treatments where you're looking at your gut. And I just finished, you know, doing this talk. You know, we started doing a lot of webinars and stuff because people just need this information, want this information, and they want it from their home. So, you know, just reviewing everything from, gut to releasing toxins to thyroid to adrenals to sex hormones you know to sleep to lifestyle and so on and so forth and and you know my my big thing that i always say and i'm sure you do the same is you've got to look at all of this if you want comprehensive care so so enough about that i think today we're going to talk really focus on thyroid because Mm -hmm. i think that's that's something that's really uh, near and dear to your heart so what i want our audience to know is how did you get involved with thyroid energy weight like this triad that you hear about all the time what brought you from you know looking at everything which of course you have to look at everything even when you're just dealing with thyroid and people don't realize that right 
So talk to us about that. What got you involved in that specific w- working with moms? Yeah. I mean, that, that's really what it came down to. I, I, I was raised by a very stressed out mompreneur uh-huh. who, and I saw how she didn't take care of her body in the name of trying to have a social life post-divorce and raising kids as a single mom. And she were by her own admission, made some very poor decisions yeah. and us kids rendered the consequences of that. So I pay it forward by helping moms. So, because as a child of an unhealthy mom and an entrepreneur, right, uh, it it makes no sense for me to shake my tiny fist. Well, the tiny fist at the world. It's like, how can I prevent a future me from experiencing what I did? If I was able to render the care to my own mom back then in some weird time loopy, yeah, sci-fi story, the younger me would have been spared a whole lot of uh, drama. Yes. So yeah. I, I got involved and the re- and so what I saw in working with moms in particular, uh, mompreneurs is slightly different. I'm going to focus on moms, but the mompreneurs is slightly additional layers of complexity. Um, what I saw was uh, middle-aged moms, uh, or even not even so middle-aged, even just from 35 to 55, that range. Yeah. What happens was that the things started to shift in a way that they didn't want. And so whether it was weight, sex drive, uh, appearance, like their hair was being affected, nails were being affected, their face, uh, body shape, uh, they were more tired more easily. And and what I saw was that when they would go get like a simple thyroid test, you know, and in New Zealand in particular, it's like you're if you're lucky, you just get a TSH. And if you beg and scream and you're on the floor curling in a fetal position, they may take pit on you and give you free T3 and free T4. Right. Uh, but it's just, and, and in, even in non places outside New Zealand, it's like most standard Western practices. It's like they run TSH and a couple of thyroid hormones and that's it. And so, well, the TSH is within range. And of course the range is like 0.5 to five, which is this massive, massive range. Mm-hmm. And what I saw was that so many people, so many moms had quote unquote, normal thyroid but they had all the signs of thyroid issues. You know, they, they, they had the signs of hypothyroidism or, hy- or hyper, hyperthyroidism, but the ranges of the thyroid were not, were, didn't reflect what they were actually going through. So then I started to, again, cause my intention is like help mom, then you help the family, sure. you know, you help entrepreneurs, you help society. So you help mompreneurs, you help both. So but focusing back on moms, it's like, okay, I need to help mom, the moms and the family. Right. So clearly thyroid, something's going on with thyroid, but the thyroid numbers themselves do not relate to what they're going through. So then I started looking at, okay, what is the thyroid downstream of Mm -hmm. some other things that are affecting it? So there's five dyads that I found and I created a little visual uh, and I'll still talk. People are just listening. I'll obviously keep talking and explain it, but there's, there's five major dyads for the thyroid. And the, the dyads are looking at mitochondria, iron, adrenals, gut, and estrogen. Now, the primary one, most people may be aware listening to this, that if you, if you have estrogen dominance, it can slow down the thyroid. It can, that's, too much, that's, why, that's one reason why most of the hypothyroidism is in women. Right. And other people may know that you need iron to make thyroid work properly. So you check for anemia and all, and that, that makes everyone, people know that. Uh, then there's the issue of adrenals where the thyroid is more about long-term health, healing, growth, and repair. Adrenals are about short-term survival. And it makes sense that if you're under threat perceived or real, right. that your adrenals kick up, that the fo- body's focus on having long-term health and growth repair is secondary to getting away from the proverbial real tiger. Correct. And so if you have a spike in cortisol, it will shut down thyroid through uh, one direct mechanism and a couple of indirect. I mean, there's there's plenty of charts and all these wonderful things from in super functional medicine. People can look up these these pathways and all the rest of it. But short short story, adrenals will slow down and blunt the thyroid. And it makes total sense from an evolutionary standpoint. Right. If you're trying to get away from a tiger, you are not interested in long-term metabolism. You just don't want to be, become part of the tiger's metabolism. Yeah, <laughs> That's the whole point. Yeah. So there's, there's the adrenal thyroid dyad, 
Then there's the gut thyroid diet. And this has to do with not only absorbing nutrients like the fat soluble vitamins and tyrosine and our, you know, other amino acids and B vitamins, et cetera, that are needed to yeah. make repair and the thyroid and all its subsequent hormones. Right. But the a gut itself can have what's called intestinal permeability or air quotes, leaky gut, and then create immune responses in the body that then those immune responses attack the thyroid as collateral damage. So the way I like to describe it is that if your gut, your gut's a glorified filter, a fancy yeah. glorified filter. Uh, when you put food in your mouth and it goes through your intestinal tract, that food is not technically in your body. It's going through your body. Like if you have a donut, you put your hole through the hole of the donut. Your yeah. finger is not in the donut. It's through it. Yeah. If you put your finger in the dough of the donut, then your finger is in the donut. So anything in your intestinal tract is not technically in your body. It's through your body. When right. it gets into your body is when it passes through that complicated filter of the internal lighting of the intestines. And that's supposed to filter to let into the blood, water, nutrients, vitamins, amino acids, fatty acids, and um, vitamins, all, all the things, but not allow bacteria, uh, fecal matter, toxins, uh, weird chemical excretia from the bacteria, or any undigested foods that, that then can be if any of those get into the bloodstream, the body then launches right. not a heat-seeking missile, but a shape-seeking missile called yeah. an antibody. There's the shape-seeking missiles that will attack, say if it's gluten that gets through, the body will attack the gluten. And then the shape of gluten is very similar to the shape of certain tissues of the thyroid. So the shape-seeking missiles will attack not just the gluten, but thyroid. Correct. And uh, I, it's like if you're just to use a gang, gang warfare analogy, if you've got Bloods and Crips shooting each other up and you happen to wear red wandering into a Crip neighborhood, you're going to get shot not because they think you're a Blood. Yeah. Even though you're total just innocent bystander, it's the exact same thing right. with like thyroid and gluten. And I just want to show here's some research articles to show there's two, uh, three infections that have research behind it. Blastocystis hominis, Yersinia enterolytica, Epstein-Barr, and gluten have papers behind them to show, and this shows up clinically when I run gut tests on people and they have signs of thyroid issue, like yeah. one or more of these things show up if they have antibodies to thyroid. Right, right. So yeah. how do we deal with that is we heal, seal, and soothe the gut, yes. and then we remove any of the infections and you know, remove any of the aggravating factors like gluten and any infections that may be involved and heal, seal, and soothe the gut. Yeah. Now, that's the fourth dyad. The fifth dyad that is least known about is mitochondria. And that's, that's I would argue, is the missing link yeah. to the vast majority of all thyroid protocols mm -hmm. is understanding thyroid. I'm uh, sorry, understanding mitochondria and its connection to the thyroid. So the way I explain it uh, is that the thyroid makes T4, which is a car of engineers right. that drive over to the electricity factory and they get to the factory, the mitochondria that makes energy. My mitochondria is the electricity factory. It takes protein, fats, and carbs, puts it through the conveyor belt, very complicated conveyor belt, and out comes electricity in the body. Right. But you need engineers. And so T4 is a little car that drives over to the factory. And at the factory, the engineer gets out. Now it's T3 because it's, it's the engineer separate from the car and it converts from T4 to T3 in the mitochondria. And then T3 acts as the engineer to dial up and dialed it like to, to turn on the factory. Right. So the thyroid may sends off the engineers to turn on the factory of the mitochondria, which means that the mitochondria is, or if I, mitochondria plural or singular, no, no, uh, the mitochondria are the business end of the thyroid. So this term people have thrown out basal metabolic rate, yeah. basal metabolic rate. We've all heard the definition, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know, the amount of energy, like the energy you burn on a day, but right. no one's really ever defined that. And what it really means is how much your mitochondria are working to gen that the energy is coming from the mitochondria. Yeah. The basal metabolic rate is the mitochondrial uh, efficient is, is the mitochondrial burn rate of how much electricity it's making. Right. So. If someone has normal thyroid hormones, air quotes, normal thyroid, but they have the signs of 
symptoms of hypothyroidism, but it's normal thyroid, right? Then it's like, okay, the engineers may be there, but the factory is broken. They sure. can toggle the toggle the switches and turn the dials all they want, but if the mitochondria are broken, the factory is not properly working. Right. Then you're going to have the it's, it's going to as if you have low thyroid. Well, what's interesting though is um, most traditional docs and you and I see patients who have only seen traditional docs. They come to mm -hmm. us, they've never had their free T3, reverse T3 thyroid I antibodies. I know. I know. Ever. I know. Effect. And so we're missing the entire, not only are we missing the link of knowing that it's the mitochondria, the gut is important, estrogen dominance is important, adrenals are important, iron's important, but we're also not really looking at the right tests. So mm -hmm. in, in, in your experience, and you know, I think both of us have had the similar experiences here. What are some functional tests that people with thyroid concerns miss? So we'll start just with layering on, you've already mentioned some of them, layering on additional thyroid markers. So everyone knows TSH. And look, I, when I sat through the IFM conferences and Dr. Lucasar, who's like the educational coordinator, plus the thyroid nerd, I say that with total respect, uh, yeah. thyroid, he just has spent like an hour or two railing about TSH alone is not a reliable measure of thyroid health. Right. And so you get like T, TSH at a minimum, TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, anti-TPO antibodies, anti-TG antibodies. There are other things you can layer on, total T4, right. anti-TSH yeah. receptors, like, but you need those core six, yeah. those yeah. core six. And uh, like Genova has, has a panel with that, uh, Access Medical has a panel, all the legit um, thyroid all, th functional labs have a version of that. Right. So that, that's, that's how the first step, expand the thyroid panel. Second step, if people want to check estrogen and adrenals, now you, you can just get a blood test for estrogen. That's great, but there's more to it also. So I like the Dutch plus test yeah. and that checks for the adrenal rhythm. Yeah. Uh, it, it checks for melatonin. It checks for seven types of estrogen, two types of progesterone metabolites, DHEA, it's metabolites, testosterone, it's metabolites. You're able to check, do you have estrogen toxicity, estrogen dominance? What are your other sex hormones you're doing? How, you know, do you have enough melatonin? Uh, the, your cortisol rhythm through the day. You get this giant, if you do the comprehensive thyroid panel, like we just mentioned, and the Dutch, you basically have all the major hormone systems accounted for. Thyroid, sex hormones, adrenal, melatonin. Right. And so that's, that's just two tests, thyroid and a Dutch plus the third test would be a really solid gut test. There are four major, four major gut tests in the functional medicine universe. There are a bunch of other publicly available ones that I have not found a single legit functional medicine doc actually use, but the yeah. four major ones that are legitimately used are GI map, GI effects, GI 360 and CDSA. Those are the four majors. Uh, and uh, I personally prefer to use the GI map as a first pass. Mm -hmm. um, the, I use GI effects to check for more of the commensals. And as a second pass, if GI map, if something doesn't add up, and then I use the GI effects, or if I've done the GI effects first and something doesn't add up, then I do a GI map as a secondary right. check. I don't particularly like the three day stool tests because uh, even though they're great, GI 360, wonderful test, wonderful. It's three days and it's too much for people because if, particularly if they're constipated, they get that. all stressed out and they yeah. don't want to do it and they, they get yeah. delayed and it's, it's all complex. Right, right. Yeah, I agree with you. The GI effects and the GI map are two of my favorites as well. Mm -hmm. It gives us, gosh, a lot of information that we're missing and valuable information that you really need if you really want to try to get your you know, gut microbiome where it needs to be and get rid of leaky gut. So and improve good. your digestion. Like, are Absolutely. you absorbing fats? Are you not? Are you, do you have gut inflammation? Do yes. you have dysbiosis? Yes. All, all the things. Yeah. Uh, and then with the mitochondria. So there's a, there's a couple of mitochondrial tests out there. My preference is the ion panel uh, and you get the iron by layering on like a serum chemistries onto the ion panel. Sure. Um, or you just get a iron studies from whatever yeah, lab that's out there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's different versions. Like there, the ion panel was the original that was developed by Dr. Lord in the seventies. 
Uh -huh. And he was the one who brought us uh, functional medicine testing of amino acids, fatty acids, and organic acids. Like, like he is the figurehead that from the seventies, that the PhD that brought all this testing to us. And he started what was called Metametrics Labs. Yeah. Uh, and, and then uh, what happened is that Genova created a version of that called Nutraval. Mm -hmm. And then and eventually Genova bought Metametrics, I believe in the 2000s sometime. So now yeah. they're all under the same roof. And so the, there's different other, there's like metabolomics, which was an attempt to make a, um, th there's, so there's, there's like organic acids testing. There's the oat testing from other companies. There's right. Nutraval, there's the ion panel, my preference. And then there's metabolomics, which was uh, Genova's recent attempt to create a non-blood draw version because people were understandably concerned about in the middle of a pandemic, going out to a medical facility when they could avoid it. So yeah. they made a blood spot version of uh, a, a mitochondria test. It's not as complete, right. of course, there's, there's, necess there's necessary limitations, but mm -hmm. it's not nothing either. So yeah. good for them to like figure out a non blood draw. Some people are afraid of needles, you know, and use that yeah. instead. The bottom line, really important to look at what the mitochondrial function is. I mean, that's, exactly. that's really, we have to look at that because people are not realizing the role of the mitochondria in our overall health. It's yeah. just huge. And let me, let me, let me use the analogy of the factory to make it really concrete for people. So a mitochondria is a really amazing electricity factory to make the factory work properly. You need walls. So these are specialized fatty acids. Yeah. You need raw materials. That means you have to have the entry points of proteins, fats, and carbs come in to be thrown into the factory. And you need B vitamins, minerals, like chromium, like poic acid, especially yeah. B5. You need carnitine, uh, okay. magnesium to help shuttle the fats. And so you need like the, the truckers of these three different fuels, carbs, proteins, and fats. They have slightly different requirements for the trucking mm -hmm. to get them to the factory. Right. Then you need security guards, which is your immune system. You need janitors and engineers to right. clean up the sparks. These right. are called free radicals because you make free. Most of the free radicals are made in the mitochondria because you make sparks from doing all this stuff. Yeah. So the free, then you need also the um, machinery inside the factory. So the machines are the vitamins, B vitamins are the most famous. And then you need um, computer chips to run those machines. Those are called minerals, They're the mineral core of vitamins. So uh, like B12, for example, is super crazy complex, but I mean, it's, it's uh, molecularly, it's enormous yeah. Uh, yeah. compared to other vitamins. Uh, and then there's some other specialized things like CoQ10, which is basically the super fancy yeah. conveyor belt that, that sends the electrons along and all that. Yeah. And yeah. so why does this relate to mitochondria, to thyroid? Because to make energy, to run the whole thing, you need the factory to work and the mitochondria are the engine, sorry, the, the thyroid is the engineers to turn on the factory. Yeah. Just flip the switch. You also need to have uh, the, these comprehensive thyroid panels, sorry, comprehensive mitochondria panels, yeah. what they check for are mitochondrial function. Are you making the energy? Do you have all the B vitamins? Do you have the minerals? Do you have the uh, free radical scavenging nutrients? Do you have the, I mean, the advanced, you know, like the ion panels, like do you check the, the, all the amino acids, which help run the factory and also help create the building blocks and everything else that feed into it to, to build everything, but not only run the factory, but build the factory. Do you have a correct fatty acid balance? Uh, do you have all the fat soluble vitamins that are there to help deal with all the sparks? Right. Do you have, how's your liver doing? It's got these wonderful liver pathways because if you get toxins that gum up the machinery, like, like oil spills and ooze and, and gunk, your machine is going to break down. So you need good liver function to detox. There's three markers for glutathione on the ion panel. Um, then there's a, then there's other odds and ends, brain inflammation, neurotransmitter markers and and all the things. So it's, to me, the biggest piece that people are missing yeah, in sure. lab testing is the mitochondria. But even from there, it's like, are people even getting their thyroids checked properly? Uh -huh. Are they even checking for estrogen? Are they checking their adrenals? They're checking their gut. Are they checking their ion, iron? Yeah. Um, yeah. Very that's, why, that's why I call the, these, these are the five dyads for thyroid. And, and the thing is, is that if people have thyroid issues, the thyroid may not be primary. It may be downstream of these other things. 
Well, that's, that's why it's important. Very interesting. And I'm glad that you pointed that out because here's the thing. A lot of patients, because there's so much talk about the thyroid, right? Everybody talks about the thyroid. Traditional doctor talks about yeah. it. Your functional medicine doc talks about it. So people know, okay, is it my hormones? Is it my thyroid? But they're not talking about the role of inflammation, the role mm -hmm. of your microbiome, the role yep. of your adrenals, yep. the role of stress in general, which of course relates to the adrenals, the role of your nutrients, the roles of your mitochondria. So when you're not talking about this, and this is for the audience, if you are thinking something's wrong with my thyroid, I'm not losing weight, I'm not sleeping well, I'm constipated, I'm really tired, my, you know, my metabolism is low, it's my thyroid. And then you want your doctor to just keep hammering the thyroid and keep adjusting it up and down and up and down. And I'm here to tell you, and Dr. Shea is going to tell you the same thing, that unless you fix everything that will lead to a healthy thyroid, you can't just keep on messing with what thyroid hormone you're getting and expect to have results and alleviation of symptoms. So that brings me to the next question. What are some of the most common mistakes that people make when they're trying to optimize their thyroid? One, obviously, is they're not testing enough things. Correct and they're not looking for what's upstream and downstream. And two, let's talk about some of the other mistakes when they're trying to tweak things. So the, the biggest mistake is what you just mentioned is not getting the proper full spectrum of testing. Um, yeah. The other common mistake is treating the thyroid like it's an other, like it's something I have to control. It's, it's this yeah. othering of the body that creates this really confrontational relationship with yeah. me and my thyroid. Like people talk about it, my thyroid, like it's some disembodied gremlin sitting on your shoulder. Yeah. And, and, I, and, I, and I talk about this because I remember when I was going through my crippling insomnia, I remember waking up at 3 a.m. hating my body, like literally seething with rage at my body. I remember talking to my body out loud, like, mm -hmm. what do you want from me? Yeah. Like, what do you want from me? Like, I'm doing everything. Else, you know, it was like, it was like, I was in an abusive relationship where I was being gaslit. I was being punished for things I wasn't being told I was being punished for. Occasionally yeah. I have one great glorious day where it was a great relationship. And then the rest was like punishing. And it just, it was this othering of, yeah. of the body that obviously ramped up adrenals and just made right. everything worse. Right. And the, what I would like to share with people is that the body is in partnership with you. It's in partnership and it's an ongoing lifelong relationship. Yeah. And that there is a, the body is doing the, the priority of the body is to survive given the circumstances it's presented with psychological circumstances, nutritional circumstances, physical circumstances, societal circumstances, everything, environmental, you name it. If you come from a place that the body is doing the absolute best it can to survive at the expense of, even if it's the expense of feeling good or looking good or, or acting or, or seemingly bizarre, like why is my body, the hair is falling out, I don't understand. It's actually trying to cope with the best it can. Yeah, and if yeah. you come from that place, everything else becomes open because if you, if you come from a combative standpoint, that right. the thyroid is this confrontational other. I yeah. could show you the 10 pillars of health and the other mistake people make of like, they're not analyzing their lifestyle in a systematic organized way. That's all irrelevant because right. if you approach your body like an enemy, your thyroid, like this other, then any recommendation I give you is now going to be exactly. used as a whip to yeah. subdue the thyroid into submission. Agreed. Agree. Well, the other thing that I think it's important at this point that you're making is when you have an attitude of, you know, attacking or, you know, calling your thyroid the enemy, it's, it's an energetic field that you're creating. You're creating this emotional energetic field where you are actually not in, you know, alliance and you're not advocating for yourself, you're actually going against yourself. And your cells listen to every single thought we have. 
if we have negative thought patterns, if we have thought patterns that are sort of against our body or not grateful for what our body is trying to do, our body listens to that. And there is a huge amount of research on your thoughts become realities and your thoughts actually have your cells doing what the cells are doing. And so it's really important to become, you know, in alliance with yourself and to be grateful for what it is doing and to enhance and to encourage it to do more and then to be grateful as though it's already happened, if that makes sense. So I think gratitude is huge as far as when you're talking to, about what you're, what you're expecting from your body. Yeah, and, and, I, and I would uh, encourage listeners to the leap from hating my body to gratitude. There's a couple steps in between. And it's, it takes, it's like, do the inner work and be okay with the transition points to just neutrality, like yeah, a, yeah. a peace with the body. And then yeah. gratitude, continue to culture towards it's that. Me. It's, it's a just, it's a continuum. Just yeah. keep, keep going in that direction. Yeah. I, I remember, uh, I remember trying to culture gratitude too early in my journey when I was too psychologically wounded yeah. and it yeah. became this other psychological, I'm not grateful enough. I'm not grateful enough. I'm not grateful enough. And then it became this other kind of cudgel. Absolutely. And it's I realized I was applying it too soon. It's a and, process and you have to be ready, but you have to kind of know where your destination correct. is. Correct. Absolutely. Absolutely. working towards that destination. So with that being said, you know, um, so people are looking at us, at us as the enemy, they're doing all of these things. And then let's talk a little bit about the different kinds of thyroid supplementation or enhancement or medications that people are using, or, you know, are kind of accepting, I'm not even going to say using, they're accepting when their physicians or their practitioners are giving them something, they're accepting it, but it's not making them feel good. So let's talk, let's educate our, our uh, listeners a little bit about the different options and what they should be looking for as pitfalls. Sure. So, the, and, I'll, and I'll just to circle back to what we talked about before and then come back to more specifically is like, I don't make decisions about what to do with nutrients or, or discussions around their medications until I have test results. Right. And so with that has to be the foundation is that if you're dealing with medications, you have to have numbers, period, okay. full stop. Okay. Uh, the, and in terms of nutrition, I'm the same way. You need numbers. So for example, if someone like the, the ion panel, you need tyrosine, you need you, you know, B vitamins, you need fat soluble ions to make the thyroid even work properly, zinc, selenium, all of those are on the ion panel. So if someone's coming to me and says, oh, I'm on medication, I want to get off of it. The first thing I says, well, one, I don't have scope to take you on or off medication. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. what I can do is check to see your nutritional status and check, check these other tests. So what then after all that's done, here's what, here's what generally happens. It's a typical case, someone's hypothyroid, they're put on medication to increase it. Here's what I, here's what I say. If you are on medication, one, that's mm -hmm. not my scope. You have to work with your prescribing physician to titrate the dose. And here's how I recommend people work with their prescribing GP. As they get healthier, based mm -hmm. on the functional test, they get healthier gut, healthier adrenals, you know, more, more level balanced estrogens, better mitochondria. What happens is that the medication they're on starts to be more effective. Yeah. So they go from a hypothyroid experience to even a hyperthyroid. And yeah. you look for what's the subtlest first signs of hyperthyroid like experience, whether it's a faster heart rate, yeah. whether it's more energy, higher anxiety, uh, di difficulty falling asleep, as opposed to being sleepy all the time. And you just, and then as soon as they start to feel the whispers of hyperthyroid like experience, I say, okay, that's the time to go back to your prescribing GP mm -hmm. to recalibrate. And hopefully they will agree to drop the dose by whatever percentage they deem safe. Right. Then then the client will then go into a more kind of go backwards to a little bit of hypothyroid, but then as they get healthier and healthier, right. then they begin to the medic, that lowered medication starts to have a hyperthyroid experience. And then they, then when they start to feel that again, then they go back and they just keep repeating. As you get healthier, you go back to the GP to reduce the dosage gently, slowly, efficiently, right. Right. And, and not efficiently, meaning like, like by the numbers tracking safely, under yeah. supervision until eventually you reach this point where you're at a 
much, much lower dose that you want that for whatever reason you're prescribing to or you want to stay on something small or you come off of it under supervision now that your body is much healthier. That to me is the safe, sane, measured, scientific method to, again, functional medicine, the best of Western medicine diagnostics with the best of natural medicine lifestyle intervention to help someone improve their thyroid in a natural measured way. Good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, that great summary. I think it's really important that the viewers and the listeners are aware that, you know, the sign of things working really well in your body, one of the signs is you may be able to come off of what you're taking or can reduce the dose because you have enhanced your body's own innate ability to do what it's been created to do. So I think that really encourages a lot of people. I'd like to thank you for your time, Dr. Shea. I think we did a, you know, really, you did a remarkable job just putting it all together. And I loved your five diets. Um, let's, uh, is there anything that you'd like to offer our audience um, so that they can find you and perhaps learn more about your? Um, yeah, the, the, this, the simplest thing to do is just go to my website, drsamshay.com, D-R-S-A-M-S-H-A-Y.com. And they can do one of two things or both. Uh, One is they can download my eBooks. I've got one called Biohack Your Biohacking, which you mentioned at the top, which goes through my 10 pillars of health model, as well as explaining a whole swath of the lab tests that are associated with each pillar. I also have another eBook on functional genetics, uh, which explains this different type of genetics technology and analysis that's come through. I like you can genetically determine your optimal diet if you're keto, paleo, Mediterranean, or high carb. So I got I got genetics, I got ebooks, genetics, um, uh, ten pillars of health and functional testing. I also have people at the time of this recording. I'm still doing uh, free health strategy calls where where people who want to work in this comprehensive way of ten pillars of health and uh, comprehensive lab analysis, they can talk to me at no charge to see if they're the right fit for this particular comprehensive functional medicine model. They can just go to my website, drsamshay.com, book a free consult session. And I'd be happy to see if this is a a right match for your situation. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, thank you. One last thing I want to add. Uh, I also have a YouTube channel and I do stand up comedy as a hobby. Oh, wow. I I, I do stand up comedy as a hobby. So if you put in my name, Dr. Sam Shay into YouTube, I have one playlist buried of the other hundred, you know, other hundred or so functional health, videos. I've got about 10 videos yes. uh, on me doing stand-up comedy. My nice. most recent one I published was on what it's like to have Asperger's, which I do. And okay. the one app I wish we all had as Aspies. So, um, and it's, and I try to, I try to make this subject really educational and really funny because I can talk about it as someone who has it. Of course. Of course. I, well, I can't personally wait to go listen to that. I think that should be really fun, entertaining, and educational. So again, thank you for being here today. It was really lovely to have you. And I know our audience learned a lot from you today. And uh, yeah, please go look up drsamshay.com and uh, learn more about these great 10 pillars. Thank you for joining us today. And till next time. Thank you. Thank you so much for making time for today's podcast with Get Well with Dr. Shell. I know that this conversation and education can help you to create your best life possible on every level. So definitely tune in to hear the newest expert and learn the latest protocols to support your best health journey. You can learn more about me and my wellness center at drshell.com, drshel.com. And I hope that you will make time to come visit us in the Houston area to take a deep dive on self-care. My team and I are completely devoted to helping you live a better life from the mo- from this moment forward. The best days of your life are ahead of you. I promise. This podcast is a powerful and simple way to carry the wisdom of thought leaders from around the world in your pocket and continue to develop your own healing journey every single day. So let the journey begin.